Hi all, this is Tim Poffenberger, and I am a part of the Solutions Architecture um, organization here at GitLab, and I had a customer ask about finding ways to, to allow guest users to be able to view code in a way that um, still adheres to GitLab's permissioning model. There's two primary use cases that I, I typically see, a, a premium or a free tier use case and then an ultimate use case. Uh, the ultimate use case is really interesting to me because guest users are free uh, in ultimate. So you can assign users, um, as long as they don't elevate beyond the guest user role across all of their projects, you do not pay for those users. Uh, one of the, and uh, for, for premium and free tier, sometimes they might wanna give code to customers or allow them to uh, look at potential issues, but anything confidential they're not allowed to see. What a guest user can and cannot do is outlined in our permissions table. Uh, and oftentimes you'll see this um, a few notes next to that guest role. And these are uh, oftentimes specific to uh, our GitLab Ultimate tier. And, um, and specifically on our SaaS product. There is an open issue right now, so at some point in time this may be resolved, uh, allowing guest users to view the repository content and private projects. This will most likely be solved by um, the ability to have customizable roles, uh, but I, I do wanna note that if you're interested in the um, leveraging this for guest users. There is no intention at this time to allow guest users uh, to remain guest users uh, in that ultimate tier without having them uh, and allow them to be free. So once this would be set up within the user interface, then you would be expected to be paying for those because they have a reporter or above permission. So let's talk about how this works. Um, so. Uh, it's a very simple project. We're using GitLab Pages, and we're collecting artifact or collecting uh, releases, downloading the code, and then making that available via zip file. Uh, what this does not do is it doesn't give you a beautiful user interface. Um, it doesn't. Uh, it's not built intentionally for artifacts to be included. Um, it doesn't scope specific paths um, uh, or files or folders within a given release on a on a branch or ta get tag. It's all the files uh, in it for a, a specific tag uh, and specifically for a given release. And then um, it doesn't support more than one project's releases at this time. And then it, um, it doesn't let users view the code. It allows them to download the code via zip file. Importantly, this is not supported by GitLab. This is just something that you can use uh, in conjunction with GitLab pages. So we're gonna walk through how to, um, to I took this project, I cloned it. Um, we're gonna uh, show you what it looks like to have that read API project access, um, and then uh, what you need to do to get started here. So uh, before I even do that, I, I just wanna show you what it looks like. So this is the end result where you can actually see that we were required to log in, validating that we are at least a guest user, and then you can also see all of the, the releases. There's only one release here, and you can also see here um, within our deployments releases, that there is one release here. If I go ahead and create a, a new release, I'm gonna go ahead and do v2.0, and I'm gonna create that as a git tag, and I'm gonna call this release 2.0. I won't associate any milestones, I'll just set the release date, and then um, you could essentially provide release assets. Um, this is our latest release that fixes a bug. And I'm gonna create this release. And I'm also gonna go ahead and run a pipeline as uh, the, this pipeline is set up to only run on the, the default branch, or on, yeah, uh, on your, your default branch. And you'll see two jobs being created, this git releases and this pages job. Uh, behind the scene, what, uh, one, one thing that we're doing is we are using that access token, that project access token, which could also be a group access token. You can see that it's set up here, has a read API scope, and it only has a role of reporter. This is being stored in CI variables and scoped. Uh, so if I open up variables, you can see a private token, and it is scoped to just the pages environment. 
And that pages environment is defined within this GitLab YAML file. There are two jobs here. There's this get releases. This is the thing that goes and downloads all of the previous releases. Uh, and you can see in here, uh, we're, we're gonna leverage this private token. Um, and the release downloader file will then, it's a Python script that then goes and downloads the, the code and makes it available. This also generates an HTML file, which is then used for your GitLab pages page. The first time you ever run this, you'll always need to, um, this needs is, uh, is self-reflecting. Uh, so if you've never run this job before, it will fail because um, this needs statement lines 17 through 21 are expecting this job to have run before in your given pipeline on your default branch. It uses uh, project variables. So once this is set up, you, you shouldn't have to change anything on this job again. And again, this GitLab pages page is really just uh, preparing to, to move things and make them available. So uh, let's validate that this pipeline has succeeded. It has succeeded. We see this pages deploy. And now I can go over uh, one last thing that I did want to mention is I am utilizing the environment name pages in the URL pages URL so that way we can lock down the private token variable. Lastly, I can see that uh, in deployments environments, there is a pages environment and I can go ahead and open this up and it also takes me to that same URL. And now we can see that there are two releases. Uh, release 2.0, release 1.0. Again, this is very simple, and upon clicking on this link, it will go ahead and generate a version 2.0 download zip file. Uh, if I'm a guest user, so this user here is, I've switched over to my T Poffenbarger per customer persona, and uh, so I only have guest user access, which means that I can see code. Uh, and the reason I can see code is because this is a public project. So let me go ahead and just show you what this might look like if this was a private project. I'm going to go ahead and make this private. I'm going to make this public again after this, uh, after this demonstration. And we go ahead and click on guest user project one more time. And now all of a sudden the code has disappeared. So I'm not, a, I'm no longer able to see the code. I'm no longer able to see the, um, I can see the releases, but I'm not actually able to download the code in this page, which is really what I would have loved to be able to do. So what you can do then is you can go here and you can click see it live and it will then take us and log in. And now again, I have access to download this code. If I was a, a unauthenticated user, um, I would not even be able to get to this page. And if I go ahead and make this project public again, and I'm going to verify that pages is only project members. And I can see this page, but I am not able to um, view the GitLab pages page. So that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully this will help uh, some customers that are looking to adopt uh, GitLab Premium or GitLab Ultimate, uh, but also make their code accessible to guest users, uh, a viable option for them now. Thanks.